There are some really gruesome details here, especially towards the end, so trigger warning for that sort of thing. Not just a head in a bucket. Some other really disturbing stuff as well. This is from Goodall, Wisconsin. About three weeks ago, just over three weeks ago, Taylor called and picked up her boyfriend, Shad, from his house. That was the last time his mother, Tara, seen him alive. They're calling them boyfriend and girlfriend in the press, but I'm not so sure about that. Taylor was married. She listed herself as a sex worker on Instagram. But they definitely have been hooking up for a few years, but I'm not sure what type of exchange was going on there. Tara knew who she was. She'd seen her room before. She thought they were boyfriend and girlfriend. And that was it. They were out all day Monday. Tara didn't see him again, but she heard him late that night, early Tuesday morning. She heard him come in and go down to the basement. That's where his bedroom was. Tara thinks they were there for most of the day Tuesday. She didn't hear his voice, but she did hear Taylor's. And her minivan was parked outside for a bit. She didn't know for sure that it was her minivan, but she assumed it was, because I think she's seen it before. That night, early hours Wednesday, 2, 2 30 a.m., she woke to a storm door being slammed. She jumped up out of bed, she kind of heard a vehicle driving off, and she assumed it was Taylor leaving. So she gets up, she notices the lights are still on in the basement, and she goes down to see her son. She hasn't seen him in a few days. Maybe she was thinking there was an argument, and Taylor stormed off, slammed the door. She goes down to the basement, she doesn't see anyone, there's no one there and just as she is walking back up the stairs, she notices a bucket at the bottom of the stairs with a blanket over it. She's like, that's weird, what's in that? She lifts off the blanket and inside the bucket was the head of her son. The poor woman must have been in shock, I'm not sure what happened for the next 30-40 minutes. She must have thinking she was tripping because the call for dispatch didn't come until 3.25am. An officer came, went to the basement, yes, confirmed, that's a human head in a bucket. Noticed some dried blood on the mattress as well. And I wonder here the fact that only one went initially, did they think that this was a serious call? Or was this woman hallucinating or something? She wasn't, her son's head was in a bucket. They quickly chatted to her, found out who her son was last with. And another unit went out to go to Taylor's house. They knew where she was staying, she was staying at her friend's house. They get out there and they have a picture of her and a picture of the van. And as they're standing outside inspecting the van, she walks out to him. She stops. The officer could see that she had dried blood all over the front of her black hoodie, as well as her black sweatpants. Same with her hands, there was blood all over her hands. The officer just looks at her and asks her, does she know why they're there? And she just says, because of my warrant for my arrest. She had a cut on her thumb. She had scratches all over her hands that she said she did herself. And there was a deep red stain on her hands from the dry blood. He spoke with her, advised her of her rights, and then told her that a few hours ago, officers were sent to a residence in Green Bay where they found the head of her boyfriend friend. Her response to that was, that's pretty fucked up. He asks her, does she know Shad? She says yes, she knows him. Asked her, was she driving the van that morning? She says yes. He asked her where the rest of the body was. She said it's still in the basement. He then asked her to tell him what happened and she just turns and says, that's a good question. She said she just blacked out at the time and there was nobody else in the basement other than her and Chad. She's taken to the station, other detectives arrive, they go looking in her van and behind the driver's seat there's a crock pop box. They open the box which was on the top of a laundry basket of clothes and inside there there was more body parts including legs. Back at the basement they lifted up his head out of the bucket and inside that his penis was there as well. They found other body parts in the basement, in plastic bags, shopping bags. They found the knives. There was a little storage unit inside her, and inside there they found his upper torso. And they could see from that and from the cuts up the top where the head was removed was consistent with the head. They found the kitchen knife. They found several internal organs. The place was covered in blood. There was an attempted clean-up, but she didn't do a very good job. And she left body parts scattered everywhere. At the same time, she was being questioned down in the station. They were on the phone to them at the same time and a lot of the things she was telling them were correct. Things like the bags that were in the basement and what they'd find in those bags. That interview that she gave in the station and some of the quotes coming out from it is some of the most disturbing things I've ever read in my life. All the quotes I'm giving her and the details are from the criminal complaint. I will link that down below. She told them the story of what happened. She said when she picked them up, she picked them up with another friend. And they went to that apartment block that they actually found her at. Three of them started smoking some weed, started smoking some crack. Her friend left and then herself and Chad shot up with Trazodone. That's an antidepressant drug. I'm not too sure how they shot up with that or what it does, to be honest. They then left that apartment and went back to Chad's house. 
Shad's mother's boyfriend actually let them into the house. And she said within about five minutes of being back there, Shad pulled out dog chains. She told them that she had used chains in the past with Shad. This is what they'd done during sex, a bit of strangulation. She then starts blurting out underneath her breath, damn the head, and I can't believe I left the head though. As if it was the head was the only thing that got her caught and they kind of pull her on that and start asking her where's the rest of the body and she tells them it's in the basement and as they're on the phone to the team searching in the basement they are finding parts of his body. They started having sex, she was on top of him choking him with the chain and she said she just went crazy. She said she could hear his heart slowing and she just kept pulling and choking him harder. He turned purple, started coughing up blood but she didn't stop, she just kept going. She said she wanted to see what happens. She made a comment that she passed out during this and when she woke up he was purple so she just kept going. She was like I've come this far I might as well keep going. She told the detectives she liked it, she enjoyed it. She asked the detectives if they know what it is like to love something so much that you kill it. When he was dead she started playing with his body for about two to three hours she said. Things like sucking on his putting a in his mouth, putting a in other places. She was with him in the basement all during the day Tuesday and into Tuesday night and into Wednesday morning. She said the plan was to bring all the body parts with her but she ended up getting lazy and only bought the foot with her. She said she didn't mean to kill him but she was choking him and liked this so she wanted to see what happened. Because of this it wasn't planned so she was unprepared. She said she pulled him to the bed, started cutting his head off, put a bucket underneath to collect the blood. She said at one point she did get a bit paranoid but just put it down to the dope she was smoking and carried on. And that was it. They asked her if she thought what she'd done was the right thing to do. And she just kind of shrugged and said she did it anyway. We know a small bit about her. She was a wife. She had a baby who was actually in the custody of her grandmother. I've read things that she's had a tough childhood. That she was essayed violently by her father her whole childhood. And that she was now a sex addict. Her husband seems to be standing by her. He has updated his Facebook showing a bit of support. Not sure what's going on there. Shad's uncle has updated his Facebook just saying that the family is is devastated. He went on to describe him as someone with a good heart and soul. He said, Shad, I love you so much I can't even begin to describe what we are feeling. The family has a GoFundMe page as well to help his mother with transportation and funeral cost. I'll leave a link to that down below as well. This is just a horrific, horrific crime. She's due back in court on March the 22nd for the rest of her initial appearance. She's been held on a 2 million bail. She's clearly crazy but... uh, I don't know whether she's going to get life in prison or be sent to the psych ward. But a mental case, absolutely crazy. Fair play if you've watched this long into the video. Good luck, God bless, have a good day.